Hello everybody, welcome to day seven of the Learn SketchUp tutorial series. My name is Jacob from Wild Academy and today we're going to be going over the keyboard shortcut tool. And this is the, uh, this is the standard that I've set up for my own keyboard. And uh, I'll have a link down below in the description to this, to, uh, to the image so that you can just look at it later if you want. Or you can just pause the video if you're able to read this on there. But uh, we're going to set up our shortcuts so that we can access all of our tools really quickly instead of having to use these toolbars. We want to be able to just, like if we want to open up our paint window, we want to just be able to hit a letter on our keyboard. You can see over here that the paint bucket right here, bucket B, will open that up. And it makes everything a lot easier. So if I wanted to like push this wall, I could just hit my A button and then I have my push tool. If I wanted to, to move anything, I can just hit W. I can move that right there. And so it makes, you know, if I wanted to draw a line, I just hit D and it makes a line. And I've set this up so that there's a mnemonic for it. It makes it super, super easy to memorize all of these tools. So eraser is E and then boom, I'm done. I use the space bar as always to go back to your arrow tool. So how we're gonna set these up is you're gonna go up to window and then you're gonna go down to preferences right there. And then from preferences, you're just gonna click right here on shortcuts. And then if we wanna add, say the line, we can just type in L I N and it'll bring up draw lines freehand or draw lines or draw lines line. That's the one you want right there. And then you can assign your uh, keys, whichever one you want. I actually don't need that there. I'll just remove the L. So you type in the D right here. Well, not shift D. I already have D there. So I'll just, I'll just remove it. Let's remove that right there. If you select that right there, you can remove it. You can add it by clicking in there. And then I'm just gonna type D and then I'm gonna hit the plus symbol and it is now assigned. Now I do need to make sure that I hit okay after I've made all these assignments. So for R, you wanna come right up here, type in rotate. Put that there, and you can see over here that I have uh, rotate for R because R, you know, is rotate. And then the biggest thing about this uh, shortcut key setup, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but is that it's all reachable within one hand. So you see here the highlighted uh, keyboard right here shows that you can reach all of these keys from the resting position of your left hand. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I already have these assigned. But you go ahead and set, oh, one of the things I wanted to say is, is the offset tool. I have that set as Q. The reason I have that is because if I type in a Q here, you'll see that there's like a tail. And if you go to your offset tool, I don't even know where the offset tool, <laughs> you don't even know where the offset tool is on here. Um, it shows like a Q, like an arrow there. So that, you just memorize that in your head that that is what offset looks like. Also parallel projection, I just wanted to show you why I set up parallel projection. And the reason I do that is because if I'm looking at this, we're looking at it in a, kind of an ISO uh, shot. If I wanted to see it so that it's straight up, actually, let's, let's show it here. So you can see here that you can see the edge of this beam here. If I hit V, then I'm getting a straight down shot. I'm looking straight down at it. And if I hit V again, it actually will go back to the parallel projection. So just like that, and then I hit V again, and you can see that everything is being squared off. And that's good to kind of just check your, your lines, make sure everything is straight and lined up. Again, we're looking at it from a uh, parallel projection, and then we're gonna look at it from a perspective right here. I think I said parallel just a second ago, but it was, it was the opposite. So there's that. That's really cool, makes things super simple and fast. Also, you want to make sure that you set up your hide and your unhide. Those are very important because if I click on this wall and I want to work within, I can just hit H to hide it and then boom, I can see the inside right there. I can go in, make my adjust make my adjustments. And then when I come back out, I just I just hit unhide, which is shift H and it unhides everything that I've hidden. Right? So if I wanted to click all three of these. There we go and then I hit hide H, then I can work in this area. And then when I'm all done, I pull right out of it and then I hit shift H again and boom, everything is now unhidden. That will, that will make everything a lot easier. That is a huge one to make sure that you set up. I, again, set all of these up. X-ray is another good one where you wanna see kind of what's inside something. You just hit the shift X and boom, 
you can kind of see inside those lines and then you just hit shift X again and it'll undo that x-ray okay I hope that's hope that's making sense um, let me just check over here a um, little bit more X makes sense right so if I select this and you hit X that's just gonna delete it right there I can hit control Z to undo just like that and if I wanted to I could I can redo so if I wanted to hit uh, X here to delete that control Z to undo I can do control Y to redo that right there so I'm gonna undo it again another good one is the group uh, if I wanted to group this whole house, let's just hide that real quick, hide that and hide that. It's really good, again, the H is really good because now I can select all this and group it without those things in my way. So now what I just need to do is hit G and I've now created a full new group. Again, if I wanted to undo that group, right here the component, if I wanted to create a new component out of this, see right here it's Shift G because it's a super group, right? So again, that's an easy way to remember it. So if I hit Shift G, the create component window is going to come up and I just I change all my settings make it the way I want it and everything is good again I mean I'm sure you're setting this all up and uh, I'm just kind of showing you why what's you know what's the point of setting all this up and why things are useful and I'm hope I hope that you can see why and how like simple this is gonna make it for you again tape measure T T for tape measure pull it out super easy control Z there Once all you've added those shortcuts in, we're going to go back into preferences or, or if you haven't closed preferences yet, I just want to show you how to export your, um, your setup so that if you're going to use another computer or if you wanted to share this setup with somebody else within your firm, let's say, so that everybody's, when you go up to somebody else's computer or their keyboard and you're going to model on their computer, you know all your, where all the keyboard shortcuts are and they're all set up as a standard and it's just a lot easier to work with the team that way what you want to do is you want to hit export so you select that right there and you can save it wherever there's a default file that it saves it in to sketch up um, the, the original one that you save onto your computer but for exporting uh, just do it this way file name you can save it on your desktop and then you can just email it to somebody so we're going to do um, standard shortcuts oh careful on the keys now there you go real nice and gently and then hit desktop right there so it's easy to find and export now if I want to X or sorry import then I just hit import I open up a you know I open up a, a, a new sketchup file that doesn't have this setup and then I just find that standard shortcut to dat right there and I import it in and then it'll give me all of the shortcuts that I've already created and there's one more thing I kind of wanted to show you because we're talking about optimization and making everything quick and this keyboard shortcut I mean this will make you two to three times faster at modeling and the sooner that you set it up the better and it doesn't take that long to learn it'll take you like a day honestly truly if you if you just take the image and again I'm gonna sh uh, put a link down below so that you can get this image I posted it on my Google Plus page and so one of the things I wanted to mention was you could get a keyboard that is meant for left-handed people it has to, still has the same setup but what it does is instead of having the keypad on the right side it's gonna have your number keypad on the left here I'll show you what that looks like just right here so you can see here that whenever you need to type your distance let's say I'm gonna cancel that out real quick and I wanted to, if I wanted to type my distance because my keys my number keys are on the right hand side of the keyboard on a typical keyboard I have to let go with my mouse and type in 60 and then hit enter but if I wanted to keep everything within reach right with the left hand so that my right hand can stay on the mouse I can get this keyboard right here it still has the same QWERTY setup and it's got this number pad right here on the left so it makes it super easy so you can see where that's gonna land it's just it's gonna be right here in relation to where where your 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 thumb is resting on the space bar and your pinky is resting on shift typically but you can just rotate your hand really quickly and type in your numbers right there and also your enter again if I come back here your enter is right there as well so if you want to like super you know make it even more as fast make yourself four times as fast I think a left-handed keyboard that has this normal setup with the keys not any of the keys kind of moved around 
but QWERTY keyboard perfectly set up but with the number pad right here on the left and you can use the shift oh let's get out of that you can use the shift key in order to use these arrows as well because the arrows are good if you want to lock something to a certain plane so if I were going to do a move here say if I wanted to well let's select all of it I'm just going to do control A to select everything and if I wanted to do move I type W let's say I wanted to move it along the uh, blue axis if I push the up then it'll lock it to the blue axis if I push uh, right think about it this way right will be my red axis because right starts with R and so does red so if I hit the right arrow key it locks to the red and then the other one is your left key and that'll obviously be your green right I mean you don't need a mnemonic for that because you already know that R is red and then up and down is blue there we go so as I was saying with this keyboard you'll be able to hold down shift and use these arrow keys right here so that'll make it even even more just uh, perfect awesome right there you can just uh, you know the 60 bucks that this keyboard is totally worth it completely worth it if I come back here a little bit there's some more and you'll see that there are some that actually have the arrow keys right here and it looks like it's going to be a little too far away for that kind of be a, a stretch and that's why I you know kind of chosen this one because the keys are a lot more closer together is this the one I chose okay yeah the six dollar prime one okay I think that's it for today let's pull this out of the way I'll leave that up for a second my name is Jacob Williams. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. I also have some programming tutorials and some graphic design tutorials. So check those out. You can learn uh, GIMP, which is an alternative to Photoshop. Hope to see you there. Have a good one, guys.